These two roll around shop carts can be seen in almost all my videos because they're so useful and versatile. I use them in almost every project. Today I'm going to make another one. And like most projects, it always begins with a good set of plans. I think most woodworkers are going to be familiar with Woodsmith Magazine and with its sister publication, Shop Notes. They began publishing Shop Notes back in 1992. January was the first issue. And you're looking on the left at issue number five from September of 1992. And that's the one with this project in it, the roll around shop cart. So the project is a little over 25 years old. They stopped publishing Shop Notes as a separate magazine in 2014, but you can still get all the back issues on either DVD or now on a thumb drive. And I'll include a link in the description below where you can do that. On the right, you see the current issue of Woodsmith from January of 2018. And behind that, you see issue number one from January of 1979. So they've been at it almost 40 years. And they're in their 11th season of a TV show on PBS. So congratulations to Don and your team, and thank you very much. Let's take a closer look at the project itself. Here you see the back and the side of one of the roll around shop carts, mostly frame and panel construction. Horizontal rails, vertical styles make up frames. The panels are gonna be man-made material, either pegboard or MDF. The frames are mostly three inches wide, except for the end styles on the back. These are only two and a quarter inches wide because they glue to a three quarter inch thick side. So it still gives the impression of being three inches. I've got more than 35 linear feet of material to rip, so I'm going to be busy at the table saw for a while. On the back frame, the styles fit in between the full width rails. On the side panel, it's a little bit different. Here, the styles are full length. In fact, they extend about six and a half inches above the top rail, but the top rails fit in between the two styles. So I'm gonna spend some time only on the two side panels and the back panel over at the miter saw cutting everything to length. The joinery is going to be all stub tin and groove. So grooves are cut on the inside edges of all the frame pieces, like I've done these samples, and then stub tenons on the ends of some of them, and that tenon fits in the groove, which also fits the panel. And when everything's glued together, it makes a very strong construction. They make special bits just for that with quarter inch cutters with an exact quarter inch space in between. So one quarter inch cutter can cut the grooves on all the frame pieces and between the two cutters can cut the matching tongue. And it makes a good fit. But the challenge is quarter inch panels that are man-made like MDF or pegboard are under a quarter of an inch. So it makes a very sloppy fit in the groove and then it makes a very sloppy glue joint. So instead, I'm going to use a special built cutter that is under a quarter of an inch, sized especially for man-made panels. I'll use this in the router table and cut all the grooves on the inside edges of all the frame pieces.
And if you saw my last video, I made this horizontal router table especially for this project so I could cut off enough material of these sides to leave that centered tongue that will fit in the groove. Just like that. Now I'll do the rest of them. The editors of Shop Notes used a butt joint to glue the back in between the two sides. I'm going to take a slight departure from that and use a biscuit joiner and put biscuits where I've drawn these lines just to help with alignment and to make it easier to manage while I glue the pieces together. Now I don't have to worry about trying to fight with the pieces to hold them in alignment while I glue them together. The biscuits take care of that. There are two shelves that give the case structure, a top shelf and a bottom shelf, constructed exactly the same way. Half inch plywood with a tongue and groove joint into a one and a half inch wide edging piece that goes on the front. The top shelf, I'll fasten a half inch below the top edge of this top rail. Now give me a lip all the way around to keep things from rolling off. And I'll have ledger strips one inch wide all the way around that the shelf sits on. So it'll be like that. And the bottom shelf will just be flush with the bottom of the case. <laughs>
on the shelves, I've cut and attached the one and a half inch wide front edging strips. And now I want to cut and attach the one inch wide side supports. I'll glue and screw them to the bottom of the shelves. And I will also drill holes and countersink them so I can screw into the side of the cabinet. And that's what I'm doing now. Next, I'll work on the top shelf and the center divider. The center divider is cut from half inch plywood, 20 inches tall, 18 and three quarters of an inch from front to back, and I'll need to cut a notch out of the front corner of it to fit this edging piece. I've got the case laying on its back. The bottom shelf is installed, and I went ahead and installed the center divider also. It's easier to install this before I install the top shelf. So I'm going to install the top shelf differently than I did the bottom shelf. On the bottom, I attach the two side supports and the back support to the shelf itself and then attach the shelf to the bottom of the case. On this top shelf, I've only attached the two side supports. The back support, I glued and screwed to the case one inch down from this top rail. It's easier to do it this way to get the center divider uh, installed in the case before the top shelf goes on. So now I can fit in the top shelf and glue and screw it into place too. For the top of the roll around shop cart, it's made from two layers of half inch plywood covered with quarter inch MDF. And it'll have an edging of one and a quarter inch wide hardwood which I'll miter at the corners and use biscuits for alignment. The two layers of plywood and the MDF need to be exactly as wide as the cart and it'll extend out over each end three inches. So for mine, it's going to be 19 and a half inches wide, 42 inches long. Here I've cut one piece to the exact dimension, 19 and a half by 42 inches, and I cut another piece just a little bit bigger in both dimensions and I glued them together. When the glue cures, I'll be able to use my router with a flush trim bit to trim them both to the exact dimension, and then I'll be able to fasten them to the cart. sitting upside down on the top right now and to lock it into place I'm going to route stop dados in the underside of the cart to house these uprights which is a departure from how the editors of shop notes did theirs. 
Now I can use chisels to square up these rounded ends. They all now look like this and I pre-drilled two holes so I'd know where to locate them. I'll get the cart set back up on here with the uprights in here in the mortises and I'll glue them in. I'll flip the whole device over and I'll finish countersinking from the top and I'll drive home two long screws in each one. And there's the cart right side up with its plywood top. I still need to cover it with quarter inch MDF and then edge band all the way around the top. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put on the casters on the bottom. I need to bring the casters up level with the bottom of the case. So I've glued together two half inch layers of plywood with an eighth inch layer of masonite and I'll glue these in place here as caster blocks. Now I'll be able to set the casters in place and mark for the holes. And drill for one and a half inch lag screws like I've done at that end. I've also attached a piece of blue painter's tape to my drill bit so I know where to stop drilling. When the tape starts sweeping away the shavings, I know I've drilled deep enough. In the Shop Notes article, they had two trays on full extension drawer slides. Very handy. On the other side, they just left it open as a big open space for storing taller items. I went ahead and put in two additional trays. I think they're that handy. I'm going to do the same thing with the cart I'm building today. These mid-level drawers or trays are nine and a half inches up from the bottom. So I use a trick that I got from the editors of Woodsmith, which is I cut a spacer nine and a half inches wide. I can lay it against the side of the cabinet, rest the drawer slide on top of that, and fasten it to the side of the cabinet. And I can do the same thing for the other three drawers and I know they're all exactly level and all exactly the same height. For the bottom tray, they're close to the bottom of the cabinet. This is eighth inch masonite. I'll lay it flat, rest the drawer runner on it and attach to the side of the cabinet. And that will give me an eighth inch of clearance at the bottom. And there are those. Now to work on the trays. The trays are sized to fit between the drawer slides, so for mine, that makes the front and back be 16 inches long, and the drawers will be 18 inches front to back from stock, two and three fourths of an inch wide. The joinery is gonna be a simple rabbit, like this. Let me show you how I make that rabbit. I'll first make this cut in all the stock, leaving a quarter of an inch of material here. I'm going to be using a pretty simple fixture to do it. I'll hold the stock vertically like that. And this one references against the rip fence. I adjusted it to leave a quarter of an inch of material. I'll do the rest of these cuts and then I'll make this one. I've lowered my saw blade to cut off just this much, leaving that quarter of an inch of material. And I've clamped a stop block to my rip fence so I can butt the stock against it for the right distance. 
so it's not riding against the rip fence. If I were to do that, I could get a kickback. <laughs> For the four trays, I've got 16 pieces, eight sides and eight fronts and backs. The bottoms are going to be quarter inch masonite, so I'll plow a groove in each piece a quarter inch up from the bottom. I've got my dado blade set up and my rip fence adjusted. Now I'll make the rest of the cuts in the other pieces. I cut the bottoms one inch smaller than the drawers, so they were 15 by 17. And I'm using pins rather than clamps to hold these together now that I've glued them. And there are the four trays finished. Next I'll go back to working on the top, gluing on the top layer of MDF. And I'll use a router with a flush trim bit to trim the MDF even with the plywood. Assembling the doors is just like all the other frame and panel construction. Once the glue cures, we'll take a look at the hardware and I'll install the doors on the cart. I use the same hardware on all my shop cabinets, wire bales, and I locate them in the same spot on all my cabinets using a store-bought jig. These kind of hinges and these doors I'm going to keep closed with a magnetic catch. Like that. I've already installed the hinges on the cabinet on that side. I'll finish installing the hinges, the door pull, and the magnetic catch on this side. One last thing, and that's to attach the edging strips around the top. I've got two extra long pieces of edging just clamped to the long sides of the cart. They're not glued in place yet. They're there so that I can fit in the short sides first. So I'm going to measure and mark and then I'll go over the miter saw and I'll cut it a little bit long and I'll sneak up on the cut, keep fitting it in until it exactly fits. Once I've got this one glued into place and the one at the other end, then I'll work on the long ones. Just like that. Now I'll do the other one. I have the edging glued on the short ends now and I've temporarily clamped in place the long ones. I've marked for biscuit joints and I'm ready to cut those.
One more jab. I'm going to ease the sharp corners at the top with a radius plane, and I'll call this project finished. Well, except for the finish. Guys, thanks for watching.